Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining this uh, e-learning session. My name is uh, Jean-Claude Borel, and I will be uh, the voice of this uh, webinar today. In uh, today's uh, session, uh, we will discuss the construction of a gravity rockfield dam and the impounding. Uh, as usual, uh, I will start with a short presentation. Uh, and then uh, we will go through a live demo of this uh, construction uh, dam. Uh, during uh, this uh, live demo, we will highlight uh, the molding of uh, bond water flow boundaries and uh, the analysis setup of a geomechanical stage construction. So before to go through the live demo, let me first uh, share some uh, basic uh, information about uh, yeah, groundwater flow boundaries in Diana and uh, then later about the geomechanical stage construction. So let's say a few words about uh, groundwater flow in uh, Diana. Uh, basically, you need to perform a groundwater flow analysis, uh, or let's say a potential flow analysis, where the potential is a pore pressure potential. In Diana, you can perform two types of uh, groundwater flow analysis, the steady state uh, groundwater flow analysis, where you can consider a fully saturated uh, state, linear solution, meaning that you have water everywhere, even in zones above the phreatic surface, or partially saturated. Uh, in that case, we, we talk about nonlinear solution. And in these states, pores can be partially filled. Uh, we talk then of saturation dependency. The second type is uh, transient groundwater flow. Uh, in that case, your boundary condition can vary in time. And this is a concept that we will use in today's demo, but I will I will get back to that. The general form of the groundwater flow equation is basically a diffusion equation, where C is the store activity, K is the hydraulic conductivity, and uh, QV is the sore or sink. Uh, in case of a steady state analysis, this equation simplifies since we do not consider the the time uh, dependency. But in today's uh, situation, we will uh, consider it. Typical uh, groundwater flow output in Diana are the pore pressure potential, phi, the pore pressure head, phi p. Uh, we will use, it can be used to determine Sorry, it looks like my screen just disappeared. Yeah, we are back. Uh, so I was saying that uh, yeah, the typical uh, output are the pore pressure potential, the pressure head, and uh, the flux. Uh, for the one who have been following some of the e-learning session, I already talked about uh, all these things during the C page phase uh, webinar. Uh, regarding the boundary condition, uh, you can consider three classes. The essential one, uh, also called the tier liché, where you prescribe the potential phi to a value phi. -li. The natural one, uh, also called the Neumann uh, boundary condition, uh, where the flux is prescribed. So uh, such like Qn equal minus Qb, where n is a vector pointing outward normal the direction. And the mixed one, uh, also called neumann rogin uh, for which you need to use uh, boundary elements. And uh, we will use this one today. Next to the groundwater flow aspects, today we will also use uh, geomechanical stage construction. Uh, this application was introduced in Diana 10.3. Uh, our current commercial version and uh, has been designed for the purpose of making it easy to define the typical geotechnical analysis in practical engineering. 
such analysis can be characterized as a combination of soil, water, and structure, where for each of these components, uh, nonlinear non material behavior may be assumed, and where the history is the different construction stage are considered. Uh, considering the water pressure, there are four types of stages that can be defined. Uh, no water present, uh, water level specified, steady st uh, water level computed, steady state, and water level computed transient. And this is, uh, this is the one we will uh, use in our live demo today. Uh, for specified uh, water level stage, uh, user must define the respective water level in the model. For a steady state computed water level, the user must define a boundary case that defines the water level. And for a transient computed water level, the, the user must define a boundary case for the initial groundwater condition and may define additional boundary condition to which time functions are assigned. We will see how to do that uh, during the live demo. When a stage with computed water level uh, is chosen, Diana automatically performs a converter flow analysis and subsequently a structural analysis. Regarding the changes allowed uh, when using the, the geomechanical stage construction, uh, you can activate or deactivate parts of your models, such as mesh sets, piles or pile set, reinforcement or reinforcement sets. You can also activate or deactivate loads or boundary condition for the groundwater flow. You can activate or deactivate support or fixed heads. And finally, you can also change the material of active part of your model. It's good to mention that, the, that this application uses uh, automatic deactivation of interface or boundary condition when they are not connected to an active part of the model. So that's not something the end user should worry about. So before we start to define the model, let's quickly look at uh, yeah, some data for this model. Uh, the dam consists of uh, 10 layers of uh, concrete fill, which are installed one by one. And uh, the compaction load is applied immediately after installation of each layer. The dam is resting on a foundation, a soil foundation. The foundation with size of 200 by 30 meter. The dam has a base of uh, 100 meter and a crest of 20. The height of the dam is 40 meter and each layer are 4 meter high. Uh, the construction phases of the dam uh, will be assumed to be a static, uh, so the need no time effect will be considered. Uh, the dam body uh, will be modeled with a clamp-play elastic, elastoplastic material model, and the foundation with a more Coulomb and Drucker prior plasticity model. I will uh, show you in more detail the parameters uh, when uh, we do the live demo. After the construction of the dam uh, is finished, the water level at the upstream side uh, will be increased as a function of time and the water will penetrate the roller compact concrete dam when time progresses. For the impounding uh, stage, we do uh, transient analysis, as I mentioned before, where we first calculate for the different time steps the pressure heads and the water level development in the dam body. Consequently, we will do a structural analysis for the same time steps where the water pressure in the dam body and the external hydrostatic water load are applied with a water aid corresponding to the respective time steps. Uh, in terms of results, we will calculate the effective stress, pore pressure, pressure head, plastic volumetric strains, the pre consolidation pressure in the cam play model and also external hydrostatic forces, which are applied automatically by Diana. Regarding the, what I mentioned previously, uh, the compaction load uh, will be applied immediately after installation of each layer, and it will consist of uh, a force per length of 100,000 uh, Newton per meter, and it will be applied on each layer after the construction. So it will result in 10 uh, load cases. 
for the construction of the dam, uh, as I said, we will consider 10 stages, uh, uh, each of them with a duration of 20 days. And from uh, 220 days, the impounding will start. And we will assume that from this time, the water level will rise from zero to 35 meters. So, so five meters under the dam crest. And this in 18 days. And uh, basically, this uh, impounding is represented here from 220 to 300 days. And from that time, uh, so from 300 days, the water level will remain constant. Uh, for the same period, we will assume that the external head at the downstream side will increase from zero to one meter. And this, uh, these are the input that we will uh, attach to our uh, boundary condition, groundwater flow boundary condition. So having said that, let's move to the live demo. Let's start Diana. So here we go. So for the model of today, uh, we are going to make it plain strain. So first, you are now familiar with the workflow. So we defined a new project. So I call it Gravity Dam Demo. I browse to my uh, e-learning folder. So I need to activate analysis of structural, but also groundwater flow. As I said, we go for plane strain. I keep the model size as one kilometer. So now you know that this uh, parameter is important. It, def it defines the molding box. And uh, you should make sure that your model fit in this uh, molding box. Uh, I choose for a measure type exact quad dominant. I go for quad tip on shape. In terms of units, we are going to use meter, kilogram, newton, second, Kelvin, and I go for degree. And we are now ready to start. So first I will uh, model the foundation of the dam, then the dam body, and uh, I will uh, use a temporary uh, plane to cut the dam bodies, in, the dam body in 10 uh, layer of equivalent thickness of four millimeter. So I already prepared an Excel sheet with all the data I need. So I start with the foundation using the polygon sheet, foundation, the method I choose coordinate. Here are my point coordinate. I zoom out and I click on create. Then it results on the foundation shape. Next, I'm going to do the same for the, the dam uh, itself. So I copy the coordinate, I call it dam. I click on create. So I have now my foundation and my dam. And as I just mentioned, I'm going to uh, create a a kind of tool shape to uh, cut the dam body. I'm going to call it uh, help sheet. Since I forgot to copy, for C. one point too much and now I click on create so you see my shape if I 
point. You see that this is the plane which is basically coming out of the plane. Uh, so I'm going to uh, use this plane to split or cut the dam. Uh, So to do that, I'm going to use the array copy function. First, I'm going to copy the plane, and then I will uh, subtract it. So I copy the type sheet with an offset of 4 meter, which is the thickness of the layers. And I do that eight times. And I click Apply. So it results in eight copy of this uh, plane. Now I need to do a, a subtract operation. Where my target is my dam and the tools are the eight, nine, uh, the nine uh, L sheet. And I choose for subtract and I click Apply. And you see that automatically, the dam layers have been created. So having done that, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of administration, and I'm going to uh, name uh, the different uh, dam layer in a consistent way. So this one, I will call it layer one. Layer two. Three. So you have to repeat as the operation for all of them. Layer four, well, almost there. And this one will be layer 10. So I have my foundation, my layer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. It's very important to have a good administration of your shape set, especially later for the stage construction. Uh, at least it, you have a clear administration, it will make uh, your life easier for the activation or deactivation of the, of the sets. So uh, geometry is uh, ready in the sense that we have a different shape. I'm going to define uh, the boundary condition, uh, starting with the structural one. So the support, starting with the X direction, So I support the two vertical edge in the x direction. And in y, the bottom one. Okay, so we have our two uh, boundary conditions, x and y. We need now to uh, define uh, fixed heads. Uh, this is for the water uh, flow. Uh, this uh, fixed head will be neglected by Diana in the stage uh, where we don't have any water flow condition, uh, but will be considered when the water flow is active. 
So I assign a fixed head and I'm going to start with fixed head simply. I make a set fixed head. So edge. I select all these edges on the upstream side. I click create. On the downstream face or edge of the dam uh, layers, uh, we are going to create an external an external head. Uh, for which we need to define a uh, boundary connection. So first, I'm going to define this connection. So I call it external and boundaries instance. It will be boundary interface, H type, and I select all these edges. The element class will be Moonwalker Flow Boundary. I define the material external and boundaries, which is Moonwalker Flow Boundary Elements, and for which I'm going to specify a conductivity of one per second. Minus one. Okay. And then I click create. Now I will be able to create later the external head. I hope you see my screen in a proper way because my computer is a little bit slow, but I think. Still, it's okay. I apologize for that. So next to that, uh, we, we are going to define uh, initial condition for the conductor flow analysis in the impounding phase. Uh, and we are going to call it uh, initial. So we call it initial upstream. And it will be part of set initial. So we need a condition for the upstream and downstream side. It's edge. And here we are going to prescribe the head. And we prescribe a zero head. And we click create. We do the same for the downstream side. So we call it initial downstream. It will be part of the initial set. And here we prescribe an external head of zero. And here we activate the boundary uh, interface that we have uh, created in the previous step. So this is for our external or uh, initial uh, condition. Then we define a, a unit head values for the uh, boundary condition uh, that will be applied uh, during the impounding. And to this boundary groundwater flow boundary condition, we will attach a time uh, function. So this one I call it prescribed heads. Upstream. Edge, it's a prescribed head. And I put one. And the time function will have factor to describe this increase from 0 to 35 meter. And I select all these edges. Click create, and I do the same for the dome stream external else downstream. Okay. 
edge is external head. I also file one and I activate so that it's coupled to the boundary interface. So we are done with the boundary condition. We need to uh, assign to the prescribed upstream and the downstream some uh, time function. So I start with the prescribed upstream. I click on the edit time dependency factor and I'm going to copy the time function. So first I'm going to switch to days and I will get back to second after I specify it. So what it says here, it says that uh, this is basically the construction phase uh, of the dam. So uh, where the 10 uh, layers are uh, constructed, uh, each layer is built in 20 days. So we come to 220 days. And from that, we start the impounding of the dam. So the water raised uh, up to 35 meter. And this is done in 18, 80 days. And from that, uh, we, we, consist, we, we consider that the water level is constant. For the downstream, we do the same operation, but we only consider a variation from 0 to 1 meter. So again, we start uh, when the dam is constructed, so at 220 days, and uh, the water level raised to one meter uh, in 80 days. So I can get back to second to have a consistent set of units. Now that I have defined my uh, groundwater flow boundary condition, uh, I'm going to define the compaction load. Uh, for every uh, layer. So I start with compact layer one. So this is something you have to repeat 10 times. It's It will be an edge load, a distributed force, For illustration, I'm going to activate first this layer. So basically, I apply the load on top. Uh, for the time being, I uh, put a unit load, and uh, I will uh, assign a, a load factor during the stage construction. So basically, I put a force of uh, one newton per meter uh, acting downwards, and I can create. So this is for the first layer. Then for the second layer, we repeat the same story. So I call it compact layer two. I select the top layer of the second layer, and I click Create. Then I activate my third layer. Copy. So there's nothing really complicated. Uh, you just need to be a little bit uh, careful in uh, your administration of the dam layers to avoid any mistake. So we are halfway. Activate my layer six. 
Paint. Oops. Seven. And activate it. And then layer eight. Nine. And finally, the last one, the top layer. So we have created all the compaction load for each layer. See that I made a typo, I can rename. It's always good to correct your mistake. So we have 10 load cases, one per layer, and we will activate them one by one during the stage construction. So we have uh, set up the geometry, we have defined the structural support, the, the groundwater flow uh, conditions, and uh, the loads. Uh, we need now to uh, define the properties, so to assign the properties. So before to do that, I'm going to import uh, material, the material properties that I'm going to use for the dam and the, and the foundation from a model that I already created so that I don't have to enter the value again. So for the foundation, uh, we are going to use a, a more coolant Drucker plasticity with the following parameter. So the Young's modulus Poisson ratio and density and the cohesion of 50,000 Newton per square meter, uh, friction angle of 30 degrees and 10 degrees for the dilatancy with a tension cutoff of 70,000 Newton per square meter and a keynote of 0.5. For the different layer of the dam, we created a material which uh, is called rock fiber, uh, roller compact uh, uh, concrete, for which let me expand it a little bit. We activate the aspect groundwater flow. Uh, here are the linear properties in terms of Young's modulus Poisson ratio and the density. And uh, the modified cam clay property. For which the friction angle is 25. The plastic atom parameter lambda 0.04, kappa 0.01, a pressure shift of 50,000 newton per square meter. And if we look at the cold water property, I see that this is not correct. It should be pressure head dependent. Here we go. And uh, for the pressure head hydraulic conductivity, we have the following diagram. So step function. And for the uh, pressure rate to activity relation, we choose the von Gagnuchen function, which is represented here. So these are the material uh, that we will use. Uh, we simply need to assign them uh, to the part of our model. So I start with the foundation, which will be plant strain. And I assign the foundation material to create. And I do the same operation, but now for the 10, uh, the 10 layers of the dam. So regular plane strain, and I choose RCC, and I click Create. So we have assigned uh, 
properties, uh, now we need to mesh this model. So first we need to assign some uh, mesh ceilings. So for the different uh, dam layers, uh, we are going to use a shape and specify an element size of two meter. And we want for this part uh, a tetra uh, dominant uh, mesh. So I select these layers and I apply. And uh, for the foundation, uh, we also go for an element size, but this time of four meter and we choose exactly dominant and then we click mesh. It results in the following mesh. So you can display the elements by material color. So you see that uh, if I make it a little bit darker, uh, this is a dam in gray and the foundation in a kind of brown. So this is uh, our resulting uh, mesh. So our model is uh, now uh, complete. So we can uh, then focus on the analysis setup. And as I mentioned, we are going to use uh, the stage construction. So first I define a new analysis that I'm going to rename. I call it uh, gravity work field dam, for instance, and I select the stage construction. So before to define the, the different stage, uh, I will start defining the, my output selection. So I'm going to ask for the strain, the plastic strain. Mm -hmm. I'm going to enlarge this a little bit. So strain plastic. Uh, I'm going to ask for the effective stress. Uh, I also want the pre-consolidation. Stress. Uh, I'm going to ask for the total head. Look like my screen again. I get frozen. I hope it's not affecting you too much. So the hydraulic heads are there. That's what I was looking. So the total head and pressure head. For the pressure, I'm going to add the pressure total and the pore pressure. And finally, I will put the hydrostatic, the external hydrostatic forces. And I think that's it. Yeah. So next to that, uh, I'm going to look at the iteration. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, five iteration for the groundwater part and 10 for the structural part. But I will choose to constant stiffness for the method and I will check the displacement and forces. Having said that, we can uh, now start with the setup of the different stage. So I have the first stage, which I'm going to call initial phase. And for this one, uh, I consider it no water. It will be the case for the construction of 10 uh, layers. Uh, so the start time is zero. Going to increase it a little bit. 
and uh, in, at this stage only the foundation is active so meaning that I deactivate all the uh, dam layers and I can leave the fixed head and the external head boundary because they will be deactivated automatically by Diana. Then I make, I add a new phase where we are current starting the construction and I call it add layer one. So again, in this phase, we have no water. And I consider the start time at 20 days. I don't need to I initialize uh, stress in new element. And only the layer one is added. And here I need to add the compaction load for this first uh, layer. And because I apply a unit load, now I can specify the real load. So I multiply it by 100,000 Newton. I'm going to repeat this uh, operation basically 10 times. So I duplicate this. And now I activate layer two. And for the load, I remove this one. And I add the second one. Okay. And I repeat the same operation for every damn layer. So now I have the level three. And I add the third load. So you can see uh, there's nothing really complicated uh, when you have a meaningful uh, set name and uh, name for your load. It's just a matter of repeating the operation. Compact layer four. Oh, I have a typo. Okay, that's not a big deal. So expand this one. So I'm almost halfway. Uh, now I remove this load. I duplicate. So the procedure is a little bit repetitive, as you can see. But nothing complicated. What to go? The good thing of using duplicate uh, phase is it keeps uh, in uh, the duplicate phase, all the active set from the previous one, so you don't have to check on uh, all of them. Eight. Okay. For instance, if instead of duplicate here, I say 
uh, t -t -t, I go there. So, and I add a stage. So first, I need to rename it, name it, and layer nine, and you will see that everything is active. Basically. So I need to completely reset. Uh, The whole uh, whole thing. So using the duplication is very convenient. Okay. And finally, the last one. Well, I need to activate. So compact layer 10 we have a load factor so the this factor is uh, basically uh, apply uh, and it multiply our unit load because uh, you remember that for each layer we apply uh, minus one so uh, in fact we will have a distributed force per layer of 100,000 newton per meter so i have uh, done my 10 uh, layers so I reached the stage where, and I just realized that I forgot to do something, and this is important uh, because I started to do it for the first uh, for layer one, but I should increase the time by twenty days every time. First, I should get back to days. This is a common mistake. Uh, so I switch back to days. Sorry for that. Where is my model? Here we go. So I start with 20 days. Then for the next phase, it will be 40 days. Okay. Then 60 days. So we consider 20 days for each layer. 80. And And then forty. So I should have done that for every phase, but I forgot, so it's time enough to correct, 160, so 160, and 200. Okay. So I have my 10 uh, phase, I corrected my mistake, or my uh, missing uh, input, let's say. Uh, now we will consider the last stage, uh, which is uh, impounding. So I rename it, impounding. And here, uh, you remember that we define initial condition and also uh, some uh, fixed head and external uh, head. That's where we are going to use it. And uh, for the type, we are going to compute it transient because it's time dependent. And for the boundary case, uh, for the initial state, we choose the initial. And it starts at 220 days. And we are going to make uh, 10 steps of uh, 20 days each. So here is the size of my step and the number of steps. So basically, we go for 200 days. Oops. Uh, here we go. So we have too many windows open now. Uh, so for this part, uh, there is no new part of the model, so I don't need to initialize stress in the new element. 
all the sets are active. And I don't uh, need to bring any load. I mean, they are already uh, applied to the model. I forgot to, to mention that uh, we didn't create a self weight load. Uh, it's not necessary in the sense that when you use a geomechanical stage construction, they now automatically apply the self weight. So uh, the end user don't have to, uh, yeah, worry about that. It's automatically done. So our uh, analysis is now ready. Uh, we have initial initial uh, phase where we have the foundation. Then we uh, add every layer, and uh, for each layer, it's immediately compacted uh, by a distributed load that we apply at the same time. And we do that in, uh, for each layer. So that's a dynamic nicely big. And then finally, uh, after this uh, 200 days, uh, we uh, do the impounding. So uh, the water will range from zero to 35 meter on the upstream uh, side. And then we will uh, saw the seepage of the water through the, through the dam. So I'm not going to run this analysis because it takes one or two minutes. I have already run, run it so that we can look at the results. Uh, so you can see that I have the same uh, phase as the one uh, we did together. And uh, first, we are going to look at the vertical stresses. So I go to the results. And uh, I'm going to look at the effective stress in the uh, y direction. And for that, I'm going to put eight levels, for instance. So this is the uh, initial phase where only is, uh, I'm going to bring back the two second to have a consistent set of units, sorry. So we can see uh, the evolution of the effective stress through the different uh, phase. So I had the first layer and the second layer of the dam, the third layer, I continue. Here is the last layer. And then we start with the impounding. So after 300 days, uh, the water level uh, reached the 35 meter, and now it stays constant. And this is the result after uh, a period of 420 days. Uh, next to that, uh, we can look at the plastic strain, for instance. So let me get back to the initial. And we start to have this plastic strain after we add the layer two. Before that, there's no plastic strain. So I add my different layer, and you see the development of the plastic strain when building the this is during the impounding and until the end. We can now check uh, the pre consolidation stress parameter. So again I go back to the initial phase for which there's nothing. And from the first layer, this parameter appears. And I can go through the different construction phase of the dam. So the dam is complete. Then starting with the impounding and raising the water to 300 days. And then water level is constant now through the time. 
Finally, we can uh, check the pore pressure. Uh, and for that, I'm going to play a little bit with the settings in the sense that I want only one level to see something nice. And uh, I'm going back to the first and for the bonding color uh, choo -choo -choo. I'm going to play a little bit so I'm going to change the bonding color like this for instance and I need to go to the impounding phase well, the pore pressure results become available. So I want to do the other way around and this one blue. So the dam, okay, and now we start with the impounding and you see the water in blue seeping through the dam. So this is uh, what uh, I wanted to show you in uh, today's presentation. Now maybe one, one more thing. I can show you the external hydrostatic forces. And this is also interesting. We have them here. And I can present them as a vector. And I go back. So I start from impounding, and you see these four C's, uh, which are gone. Here, OK. Next one. Here they are. Show point to show vector. And you can see this hydrostatic forces, how they develop on the upstream edge. So this is it for uh, today's uh, session. Uh, we built uh, a dam in 10 uh, layers. For each layer, we applied a, a compaction load. Uh, after construction of this dam, uh, we did an impounding phase, where the water level was raised to 35 meters on the upstream. And then uh, we look at the water flows through the dam, basically. Uh, in terms of uh, groundwater flow uh, uh, analysis in combination with the stage construction. Uh, so I'd like to thank you all for uh, attending uh, this uh, webinar. And uh, I'm pleased to see uh, that uh, some people are coming back every two weeks, so they don't get bored. That's very good. I appreciate that. And uh, hopefully we see each other in two weeks. So I wish you a pleasant day. and. Uh, I will say that. Bye.